So here we go. Uh, with uh, 1500 to 1800 bracket here. I believe there's a bit of an elo gap between these two. Oh, never mind, they're actually quite close. Uh, but uh, keep in mind here, <laughs> Big Show here, he's, <laughs> he's been reaching round 5 through <laughs> the, the quarterfinals through mainly admin wins, if I remember correctly. <laughs> and uh, that's just an unfortunate series of events with games being cancelled. But uh, here he is in the uh, quarterfinals against AR12. They are both in the 1700s by the looks of it. So we might be um, up for a good set of games here, high level, for sure. We have Chinese versus Celts. So, um, Bicho, I don't, don't know if he's an all-in kind of a player here, if he's going to go for Wang style, uh, Monk Siege, Knights push here. Uh, that's something that could be very efficient against the Chinese, though. So we'll see how AR12 handles this. Is an at an incredible only 12 seconds of idle TC time here with the Chinese. Uh, might help a little bit that you have cows to start, but uh, anyway, as uh, you probably know, Chinese start with uh, 0 food and 50 wood, so to have only 12 seconds idle TC at this stage is uh, pretty impressive. It's a sign of good efficiency here with 7 on food, as is uh, customary for Chinese to, um, to compensate for that lack of food in the start. And... Uh, yeah, you want to keep that uh, food going. It's pushing in deer as well, just to boost the food economy even further. You never want to go idle because you want to keep the lead as well as you can with the Chinese, starting with three extra villagers. So you go into loom right away. And if you can keep the idle TC time at an absolute minimum, you will be potentially going to the fuel age at a two villagers lead because of your three villagers. So usually I'd see Chinese going for archers play, and in the field age that certainly has merit to it. We'll see how the Celts respond to that though, because with the Celts faster firing siege, it can be a bit awkward to play play archers, even if your micro is on point. No sign of any um, any lane or anything here, so the players are playing fair play for now. Both pushing in here to boost their food economy and uh, having that TC idle TC time at the minimum. They are 12, then keeping that two builders lead since they have the roughly similar idle time here. So for Celts, the go to in Feud Age, it used to be Drushes in the Dark Age for Celts because they have faster moving infantry, but some months ago in a patch that was nerfed for the Celts so that they don't get. Um, the faster moving infantry from the get-go anymore. In the feudal age, Celts infantry start moving faster. And uh, that's why you often see Celts going for the men at arms because you could essentially outrun enemy infantry units and uh, and more easily run away from archers for that matter. So that uh, gives you a, an advantage for that kind of kind of opening play. Then you could follow it up with archers. You'd usually follow up in the targets with archers to buy some time for a cast late transition. And obviously, Celt's strong suits, and um, most of all, is the siege weapons firing faster. So from the cast late onwards, we we'll, should be seeing uh, maybe light siege play or monk siege play or something from the Celts. Pike siege, of course, an option as well if the Chinese are going for the cavalry approach here. Chinese, they have lots of options overall. Uh, fully upgraded, or they have in the cast stage at least fully upgraded knights and camels, and uh, they get Arvalest, their unique unit to Chukodu is a great anti-infantry unit as well, and that actually does quite well against Siege for with their high uh, firing rate So we see some wall ops here. Air 12 just missing the back here and the side. If he goes very greedy here with the walls, he could actually secure a couple more with as well. But I think he's probably gonna do this section next. And uh, then he has at least two golds inside of his base that are fairly secure here. 
Not be sure just now, moving out, and yeah, no, it's probably not stressing it. So usually you'd move out earlier to see what the enemy is up to, but uh, given the lack of wood and the lack of 50 wood at the start from Chinese, uh, you generally wouldn't expect them to go for, for example, a Drush or even melee Arms, because it would be uh, later than, happening later than generic civs. Bicho is a bit off on the scouting here though, he's scouting the edge of the map here and he doesn't quite find the opponent. So that's uh, some valuable time lost for the minute arms there, as AR12 might just be full well in time. He has the barracks up and will be dropping the range right away, I think. So when the... Um... Ooh! Five, five minute arms! We're not uh, joking around here, are we? Well, I mean, with the full walls of AR-12, I guess um, Kelt's men at arms towers could have some uh, potential here, because uh, you need to break through the walls somehow. There's still an opening in the back here on uh, the right-hand side, but that's going to be closed very soon. The issue is that AR-12 has the range up, and he's with 5 on gold already, so he'll be pumping out some archers to counter this infantry play nicely. I think, yeah, 5 men at arms. No joke, of course, but they're moving too, out too late here, in my opinion. There are, um, yeah. It's a strong offensive and a huge military lead right now, but the archers will be out any moment, and with just a little bit of micro from a few archers, you deal with this pressure no problem. Scouts fight here as well. Air throw gets the first hit, so it's uh, at an, an advantage here. He should be seeing the uh, actual five men at arms now. But it's uh, men at arms into archers for Bisho, not Bisho as well. Uh, it might actually make it through here. Oh, never mind. The house blocks him out. And the second house obviously will do so as well. And now there are enough archers on the field for Air 12 here to deal with the men at arms from the high wall. So that effectively stops the men at arms forward for now. It still provides some map control in the essence that you have army on the field and, um, for example, Air 12 can't easily just send villagers out to do whatever on the field. But uh, that is five men at arms. A 100 gold investment into men at arms here and significant chunk of food not really providing for the common good here the ir12 could just use his archers from behind the walls to focus these down so you can't really you can't really pound away at the palisade ways uh, palisade walls here either you need some skirmishers to accompany them or archers of course but uh, now at this uh, this stage in the game i think uh, i think um Skirmishers makes more sense for uh, Bisho here. Air yeah. 12 scouting is actually, I mean, he knows the berries, he knows the stones, he knows the wood line, but he doesn't see any of the golds. And now he loses his scout as well. He has that side gold though, so he knows that there has to be a main gold somewhere inside the base here. Men at arms hitting away the house here, but they are in getting focused down by the archers now. So again, this uh, huge investment for Big Show. Uh, I guess he didn't expect Air 12 to pull wall this early with Chinese here, and that he was hoping to get more value from five men at arms, but in that sense I think I can't help but think that sending maybe just the first three men at arms first and then uh, spread out the last two would have provided more value here. Maybe, just maybe, would have been able to enter the backside before the walls were complete there.
archers forward now, nice follow from Bisho in the end then, now he has uh, archers to back his men at arms, they both have uh, fletching, but air 12 with the Chinese builders advantage, he's keeping that as you can see, 40 to 37 here, he's going to the cast stage and he's going to beat uh, Lat Bisho by at least 50 seconds or so here. Yep, there's an opening, and now it's time for Lat Bisho to deal some serious damage here. Uh, good house walls initiative from AR-12 here, but with the archers behind, I think they could still be in light. The Men at Arms will prove their value. Uh, okay, uh, he actually doesn't try to break through here. He's going to go for the... Uh, try and hunt for the gold instead. He knows about this gold location, but uh, might be thinking that there could be other exposed resources to take here. Uh, it's one builder down, first blood of the game goes to Lat Bisho here, another builder perhaps as well, but crossbow... Oh, well, never mind, crossbow is still one minute away. Uh, but I think Lat Bisho is considering these units expendable at this point, he's probably planning to follow up with something else than, than the um, archer's line unit. He's going skirmishers, possibly into elite skirms here. But for the Celts, again, their strong suit is the Siege Push, and there's a lovely hill here to place a forward Siege Workshop and start pushing. If you have the units to back it, and currently the only army Air 12 has on the field are Archers, soon to be crossbow. So if you have Elite Skirms ready in the Castle Age, you could protect your forward builder and um, start a solid push from the hill here. The gold is indeed quite forward here. Five skirmishers now, two rangers, pumping out units a mix of archers and skirms. I'm not too sure about the archers at this point. Air 12 making good use of the earlier cast station here, but it's now dropping um, two town centers here to extend the economy and of course protect woodlands and the main gold here. Again though, this position here is to be easily siege pushed if uh, Air 12 doesn't keep his uh, army initiative and advantage here. Just a few seconds now until Lot Bisho is in the Castle Age. Getting both Crossbow and Elite Skirm here. And uh, Vodkin as well, so um, solid. Celts economy behind this as well. Only three builders apart between the two players, but Airfield, the three TCs. If he doesn't get punished soon, that boom is going to pay off a lot for. Air 12 with the Chinese here for a uh, potential earlier Imperial Age and uh, whatever unit he uh, wants to follow this up with. He is running into Elite Skirm now and going to be chased down though. There's still a heal advantage here to be taken, but uh, still limited potential for the crossbows considering the numbers of Elite Skirms here. They have the same upgrades as well. And this is going to come down to micromanagement skills, and they are well, does have pretty darn good archers. Micro he plays archers a lot, so he could still get in the better end of the deal here. But he is, as you can see, outmatched in in army strength here, in the sense that skirmishers are actually the counter unit here. He's going to lose most of the crossbows here, giving the hill away to Lot Bisho here to to use for for pushing. See, TC, pull back, pull back, pull back. <laughs> there we go. Air 12 with um, stable as a reaction to the skirmishers investment, of course, and siege workshop. So, let's talk okay, about the Chinese eco, eco behind this. So, Knight does want defense as well, but there might just be enough crossbows here to to deal with small numbers of Knights here. I wouldn't be too surprised to see a Monastery popping up on this hill in not too long as well, uh, if this is uh, Huang-inspired Celt-style play. It's not really low, it's already two DCs, so that Bisho is hardly dependent on market play here. He is falling behind the builders though, and that's a surprisingly 
little damaging when they're shot. Oh, there's a good hit for Aircall. Even uphill, good hit there. Good dodge from uh, Lot Bishop there, but he's being constantly chased chased high here by knights and crossbows and the Mangonel. And uh, AR12 takes the hill back here now to place his own forward siege workshop, as Lot Bishop simply has to bail on that one and opt for defensive siege instead. He, no surprises there. AR12 takes back the hill, drops the siege workshop, and is now going to push down the hill. This hill is as bad for both the players here, so it's at least it's fair in that sense. Uh, with uh, Lot Bishop with an even worse gold here. That's essentially on top of the hill here though. 61 to 51 builders here, Air 12 keeping at least two of the town centers producing here. But he has the army momentum again here now. 16 builds with two seven. Mangonel crossbow even a few knights here. One advantage of being Chinese here as well is that your um, researchers are cheaper, so whatever switches you need to make along the way, they get cheaper throughout the ages and in the Imperial Age. I don't remember the discount rate, but you're definitely in a good spot to make easy switches into, for example, knights. Bishop trying to get a Mangadon snipe with his own Mangadon here, but AR12's micro again is on point. With not one, soon to be two Mangadons pushing from the hill here, taking good advantage of the nasty hill in front of, uh, or in the middle of their bases now. Three TCs producing behind this, and uh, Lot Bishop, of course, using both of uh, his TCs as well. Actually, not this one, so. He might need to relocate some villagers here soon. We still only have plus one for the knights, but the main goal of these knights is to snipe the siege here, and they do that. This forward TC is rendered quite useless now. And unfortunately for the Lot Bishop, only two out of the three TCs producing here could be intentional, but with the villagers skewed, I don't think so. He's saving up for the defensive castle here now, is with quite heavily on stone, which is already a huge economic disadvantage as well when you have to collect all that stone that could be going into other resources. AR12, as you can see, barely collecting stone, at least not at the same rate, 14 on stone to 5 on stone. Much more healthier economy behind this for AR12, who is, um, admittedly, he, he's peaked above 1900, so he might be a more seasoned, more solid player than the elos of the players here could suggest. Oh, but careful though. Still uphill though, it's tough to fight Magnus uphill. Oh, that's one for two. Beautiful hit for Airfell there. Crossbow numbers roughly similar here, so I still favor the Chinese, and there comes a stable on the hill as well to dub double up on the knights to go into some raids maybe. Looks like Lot Bishop wants to try for a counter attack here. Uh, I think he, he knows that there's a gold in the back here, so he could break through the palisade here, enter, and try to obstruct at least some of AR12's gold income. But if you look at the overall eco here, it's that 12 builder lead for AR12 now. And his food and gold disposition would be indicative of a knight's follow up here. Mangonel's on point to possibly deny this castle as well. Oh, yo, 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 there's gonna be so many builders down for Lot Bishop here. Even if the cast goes up, that's going to be lots of builders down potentially. Air 12 just keeping the Mangonels close here to make sure, and the crossbows for that matter, to make sure the castle can't easily go up. Takes a hit there to the crossbows, but will focus down the Mangonel with a minimum of units losses there. Could even send the forward builder in here to wall in this foundation so that Lot Bishop can't easily complete this one. For now, it's just uh, pounding away with Magnus to do damage to the foundation, though. So, once the castle is actually up, if it uh, goes up at all, then uh, it's going to be weak and uh, subject to, for example, ramps pushing or other units just sitting under the castle. Yeah, this foundation goes down unless Lot Bishop uh, deletes it, and the next target will be the production capabilities like the, the um, ranges of siege workshops here. 
One Magnol out for Latvish. Sure he has the faster firing Magnols, but now with all these knights on the field, it's easier said than done. As he tries for another defensive castle here, will be losing this one if he doesn't delete it. And he doesn't delete it in time, unfortunately. Maybe not that much stone to be saved on a 70% castle. Uh, this castle might go up, but uh, at what cost though? Some counter raids going on here, but Air 12 still he has those three, four TCs now actually. Five TCs total to uh, garrison builders, so he's going to take a minimum of losses at home here. The castle does go up, but uh, Latbishow, uh, as a result, is off wood, has invested a lot into stone, and it's generally it's just too far behind here, unfortunately, losing his forward as well. And, um, and let me just pull up the scoreboard first here. And uh, see the stats. Mill too high, they're not that indifferent, but they are 12. Did some great uh, work to secure the hill in the middle and to push from that one later on. Nice map reading, nice map presence, although he did lose the initial fight against the Skurbs investment of uh, Latvisho, but he adapted and uh, kept holding that hill, which is so crucial for the progress of the game. Overall strong economy, uh, kept that Chinese Two builders lead all the way throughout the game, so a very solid Chinese play here by Air 12. And the uptimes slightly smoother as well. I think that was 22 or 23 pop for Air 12, maybe even more with the Chinese there facilitating a smoother cast stage with the investments behind. And then um, society score in the end here to show. Right, so they pull up the second game between the two here. We'll be going to a lot Bishop's home map, which is Serengeti. So Serengeti it is, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's one of my um, all-time favorite maps. It's, um, there's food in abundance on this map and it's very open, it's tougher to wall than Arabia is in general. This cracked terrain, if you place buildings there, they take more damage than if they are on solid terrain as well. So you can't, I mean, if you place a castle on this hill, it's going to do go down more easily than uh, than the castle on the solid ground. So that's something to keep in mind when playing these arid des deserty maps that your buildings will be more vulnerable. Could actually be used in a strategical manner. But for Serengeti here, Mongols somehow aren't banned here. So AR-12 gets Mongols for Serengeti. That could be something that he will exploit to his full advantage here. There is a total of uh, 8 Huntables and the Elephant to be taken here for the Mongols. 40% faster hunt to be advantage. If you push in uh, lots of those, uh, if not all, you're going to look at a potential 17 Pop Scouts with still the option to afford eco upgrades or you could go as low as 19 Pop, maybe even 18 Pop Straight Archers or Men at Arms Towers. So many options with Mongols on maps with lots of hunt like this. I'm looking forward to seeing how AR-12 will play that. He has a nice back gold, so he could still have archers in mind for this one as well. His opponent, however, however is Aztecs. Uh, so Aztecs are, I think they're classified as uh, infantry and monk civilization. So the Aztecs um, monks are ridiculous if you can get to the upgrades. For each upgrade you research for the monks, Aztecs get plus 5 hit points on the monks. So that's um, really, really scary if they can get to those uh, but they will be opening the game usually with a drop or men at arms because Aztec starts with plus 50 gold and could comfortably just drop the barracks go for a pre-mill rush before uh, or without having to collect any extra gold alternatively you could do like Lat Bishop did beat the Celts the previous game and make a few extra men at arms at uh, less expense than other generic civilizations would
already scouting the enemy side here, so that could be indicative of an early offensive here. Maybe the pre mill rush from Lat Bisho here. He um, didn't drop the mill yet, and he is at 13 villagers. He's going to... I might mill the hunt. No, no, it's a long distance hunting, actually. So if you want a long distance hunt, you want to task four villagers, not only just two. Because if, uh, if you have three, they will go back to finish off the carcass. But if you have four, it's going to collect all of the food on the hunted animal before uh, moving on to the next one. Ten gold being taken here, and I think that's indicative of a rush investment here. Before the mill goes up, it still feels like the barracks is going up a little bit late here, but that might just be me. I don't play rushes. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, definitely going up before the mill here, so that the infantry investment will be able to hit air 12 at maybe minute 8, 8.30 or so. Which is about the time the Mongols, with a very low population app, will be reaching the feudal age, but air 12 is still producing villagers here, it looks like he's going to go 20 pop, and he's uh, going a bit extra on wood here, so I think he might, it might not necessarily be the scouts here. <laughs> very, very awkward ostrich lure there, zebra lure there from air 12. He's uh, greedy with the pushing here and not committing to scouting just yet, however he is up against the um, Aztecs, so he probably expects a uh, rush from men-at-arms to come his way, no matter what. So three militia, maybe a few more being uh, queued after this one as well. Meanwhile, Air 12 is going 21 pop up here. He's dropping the barracks and he has not gone to gold yet. But uh, there he is. So it's not the scouts, it's the 21 pop straight archers here. Old Goldner, hello, hello. Last set of this casting session going on here. Air 12 is um, played so in Chinese to a great acclaim the first game. He. I don't know if he scouted a Drush or not. I think he's. I mean, he hasn't even found the opponent yet, Air 12. But he is going to straight arches here. So once he reaches the Feudal Age, which is any moment, he shouldn't have any problem cleaning up this Drush. Even if it's uh, four or five militia coming. Oh, they break through. Dark Age Walls. Got nerfed recently, so um, so they only have 150 hit points. So if the Palisades are incomplete, the uh, militia could actually break through rather easily here. Air 12 has loom though; it's not going completely crazy with Mongols here with the <laughs> no loom up, and uh, saves the situation here. See how the players, when they're under this kind of aggression, they always wall in towards the TC. That's so that the infantry units have to pass next to the TC or walk all the way around to uh, to hit your the rest of your resources. Air 12 with range up now. Straight archers really seems to enjoy his archers style play here. And re-walling the berries as well to reclaim that extra food source. There's still hunt to be taken as well. So if Air 12 is in a pinch for food here, he could either long distance hunt or mill the food while he fends off the drudge with the archers here. Could be that a lot Bishop with the purple hair was expecting scouts from Mongols on this uh, very open map, because see his, um, his walling behind this as well. He's dropping farms, so this is a drush fast castle approach from the Aztecs, I think, and he's uh, all walled off at home now. Shouldn't be any openings there. He sees the hunt as well, so that's going to be his next target, but he will be uh, hunted down by Air 12's archers here. Which can also be used later on to obstruct the enemy economy behind the walls here. But I like the way a lot of Bisho is walling here, is keeping the walls a few tiles out so that the archers 
will not be able to feudal age archers won't be able to reach any core resources here. Three archers, but no fletching yet, as um, a lot Bishop recognizes. He's going to the feudal age now at 29 pop, definitely indicative of a uh, fast castle investment here. He could be thinking fast castle eagles at this point, since AR12 is uh, going for the archer's line. But we'll see how he follows this up after the feudal age here. Vatsok, hello, hello. Hello, Asker, indeed. Hey, Asker. That's me. Hey, Arkal, with uh, Blacksmith as well, going to get uh, Fletching um, quite soon. What does it like Corona size now? Oh. I bring me a fine little um, frisure and utsend. Village for for a lot bit show here. Market's going up and uh, blacksmith going up as well. Melty <laughs> disc. Double walls. I like the initiative of that bit with the double walls here as well as a preemptive tower on the goal. I mean that is kind of a loss for that bit show here because it delays and the. Uh, further town centers without mining stone or buying stone in the next stage. On the other hand, it will secure the gold more. Secure the gold additionally from the archers forward here. And uh, since both golds are forward for that bitch on this side, a tower is honestly a necessity at this point to ensure the gold income. So it's still only the barracks here for uh, Lat Bisho. He's going to the castle age, and I think he's going to drop another barracks and go straight for the eagles here, considering his 8 on gold and. Uh, yeah, he didn't get any upgrades yet, but uh, seeing the first and uh, yeah, the full on archers investment here, air 12, I think eagles make the most sense here. Did you see Kong and H2 versus 6 against space? No, I didn't. <laughs> HJ and uh, Kong probably won. Stone balls! Oi, oi, oi. Desperate measures here to keep the uh, Mongols archers out. So limited damage potential for air 12 here. He's now getting wheelbarrow, so he's not really stressing that castle age either. He's uh, walling off at home uh, with the palisades and everything here. He might need to opt for stone walls at some point if the eagles are coming. Three barracks investment for that bisho here, so um, even though there's a few upgrades still needing to be had here, air 12 will um, need to back off soon enough here. I don't think he can uh, really uh, contest Eagle player. I'll call her Song Request on Horn. We can do that after this uh, this set. But I'm not in a great playing shape to say the least, but I'll do my best. Yeah, it worked. You did it twice even, so you get two songs. <laughs> Thirteen gold now, consistent eagle production question mark here from uh, Latvi Show. If he can find and hunt down the archers, it's going to de diminish uh, diminish uh, Mongols archers numbers quite a bit. Oh, are you hacking my channel points, Alcolner? Can't have that. <laughs> oh, are you in quarantine, uh, Vatsuk? Ay ay ay. Horde Vendor, um, Eagle Warriors, Eagles and Siege here maybe for a lot show. AR-12 hiding away the archers here pending the crossbow upgrade. There are still some upgrades missing for the Eagles, so if AR-12 can get to crossbow here, he could still try and focus fires on the Eagles.
better be safe than sorry in COVID situations for sure. Everybody's playing Valheim these days. Oh, so you're keeping wolves as pets in Valheim. Go <laughs> room F there. <laughs> Cast H in for air 12 now. He has a solid chunk of archers to become crossbow series. Uh, also dropping the siege workshop. I think he's... Uh, well, I mean, he's, he, he expect, he's seen the forward siege workshop. Or expecting it from uh, Lot Bicho here. So that's a defensive investment. Could also come in handy to add some scorpions here against the infantry investment of Lot Bicho here. He is risking moving out with the crossbows here though. Crossbow botkin about to kick in and uh as the eagle well the eagles have plus two now, so they're not going to be easy to fight down here for air 12. He might need to think about another counter unit for the Eagles as well. Ram is a good addition from that Bisho here. It's um, going to force air 12 into units to react to that, but the Mangonel should deal with the uh, the uh, ram here without huge issues, and if air 12 can force the eagles into a choke point here, it could get a dream mangonel shot in on the eagles even as well. Let's see, let's see. Does he get it? Oh, he's jabating the eagles towards the TC fire here. And... Allowing the eagle raids to enter here to focus down the mangonel, but it does get the ram focused down here. Before we go on and... Um, Focus fires eagles here now to take the KD to the positive. Lot Bisho has lost enough eagles to have to back out here. He's dropping some forward barracks as well, and this is solid defense from Air 12. It's also looking kind of tough to hold off against the eagle versions at this point without a proper counter unit. Another Mangonel to yeah, keep holding against the Siege Crush. Oh, what a beautiful castle on the hill here. And if Air 12 can get to the Mangodai and uh, survive with those to the late game, that's obviously a different situation for the Mongols. Yeah. The Eagles are denied entry here again. I'm just waiting to see a mango shot or something when they're chilling out uh, against that. But of course the mangonels would have to be used to uh, to focus down the offensive siege as well. 19 crossbows, 1 mangonel for air 12. He's not overextending here, he's not panicking. He's just holding his own inside with walls here and defending like a true champ. Is there... No, that's neutral units. Looks like green units. Oh, two Magnals on the hill, though! That had me worried for a moment there. AR-12. Castle providing cover fire. There's no ballistics yet, though, so that uh, hurts for the castle. But uh, still jabating the eagles into the castle fire. That's going to cause units losses again for Bishow here. He will focus down one range here. And possibly the other one as well. But uh, AR-12 doesn't strictly need the crossbows and the masters anymore. He is transitioning into Mangodai and he is with five on stone still will at some point drop another castle maybe if he can. to snipe two Mangadals here, really? Really? That's amazing value from four Mangadai, even if they eventually go down. Air 12 focuses down the forward builder as well, potentially. 
it's amazing what AR12 can do with Four Magadai here without <laughs> ballistics and all that. I'm assuming he may have Thumbring at this point, can't really check it here in the stats. But that's uh, one that's important for cavalry, archer, line units like the Magadai. Five Magadai now out. They have higher HP than the crossbows, right? So they will be better against the Eagle Warriors in that sense as well, if the Eagle Warriors get up close. University going up now. And they are told we'll be going into ballistics here as well to benefit from uh, to benefit his, his archers and Mangudai here. That looked like an overchop for a moment, but the eagles are kept out yet again here. Well, let's see the yeah, they still tank quite a lot of shots here, but to have the hit and run potential, you could take the hill. AR12 is, clearly isn't paying attention to his Mangudai right now. But uh, now he's running and he's uh, matching the Magadai speed. I don't think Air 12 has... He doesn't have... Oh, there's a stable. Never mind. He has a stable. So he's now getting bloodlines that will grab more hit points for the Magadai. And uh, since he's outrunning the Eagles, I can only assume that he has uh, husbandry as well. Mangadai numbers growing increasingly large here. They're both uh, doing uh, good work at keeping their their resources uh, at not keeping their resources here, but spending them. Uh, Bishop with only four on gold right now, though he's uh, spent his gold at home. It's uh, gold intensive to go for eagles now, only four on gold. So he must be preparing some kind of switch here, going into skirmishers, maybe even at lateral skirmishers with the uh, Aztecs here to try and hold off the. The Magadai, but uh, these numbers are increasing. Consistent one castle production here for Air 12 is probably going to drop his next castle on the hill here to further fortify his position at home if he doesn't want to go bold C and drop it forward as well. But I think that might not be worthwhile here. Air 12 we see. Ah, maybe he didn't see that he didn't start constructing so. But he's now out for blood on the enemy side. No villagers lost for uh, Lot Bishop so far. They're keeping their numbers very similar here. The only difference is that one builder down, down for Air 12. So they are <laughs> very similar in the eco approach here. But that might change if uh, Air 12 gets some raids in with the Mangadai here. So, army masses is uh, not looking encouraging for Latvicho at this point. We had 27 military for air 12, and it's only 4 for the Aztecs player here. Uh, you can't really... What's the Aztecs player going to do here? I mean, he's not floating a lot of gold. If he was, he could go. He could try maybe Redemption Monks, Convert Siege and get some lucky hits in here. He's uh, built Defensive Siege Workshop. is a good call. He could mix um, Scorpions and... Uh, Mangonels in here with success, but he really really needs uh, more army on the field now while being ready like crazy Stone situation not allowing for a castle yet either an AR-12 AR is denying stone like a champ here There's stone in the back of uh, Purple's base as well though So eventually he's gonna get a castle up which will probably go inside of his walls here to make sure it goes up in the middle of the farm eco here or something Couple of eagles trying to snipe the siege weapon there. They might succeed. They kill siege extremely fast. And they are going to bounce. Oh, 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 oh that cheek yet yeah, hacked round. That was a good play. And crossbows. Yeah, AR 12's micro is on point here. Nothing to say about that. Here comes the forward siege workshop as well. And uh, as the game goes on, if Mongols can get to the Imperial Age, they get just all that much stronger with their Imperial Age unique technology. Uh, drill for the siege weapons. Uh, having to do a siege weapon. Move faster, 40% faster, I think. And 
Drill C Triumph, which is a death blow to just about enemy civilization. Uh, well, we have the Rangers here, we have Elite Skirms, but it's going to take a lot to be sure a long time to uh, get to the crucial numbers here. Most of this army, aside from the Magnol, is countered by Skirms, so if you just have uh, enough Elite Skirms and uh, some Eagles, you could still hold off this forward, but um, Air 12 is not going to let go of the pressure now. He's settled for. That's one castle is going to drop another one soon. That might actually be coming forward. But we can see the Eco KD as well. Some amazing raids for Air 12 here. One TC down, two Magnals pushing now, and Mangodai slaughtering builders of the Aztecs here, giving Air 12 a 20 builders lead. GD is called. Well played. Great offensive by Latbisho here. But it is Air 12's game in the end. Moving on to the semi final here. All right, um, brief look at the stats here. You can see the castle count, builders max for air 12 in the end. The star that means that that's his current number, so he sits at 85 builders. Bicho actually with a higher builder total, but he of, of course lost quite a few to the raids here. And uh, we'll see buildings raised, maybe not that interesting. That army high is significant here. 22 army at some point for lot. Bicho had some good momentum there, but. Uh, not enough to overtake Air 12's base. We have the resource stats here showing that amazing Mongols economy. If you can uh, stabilize it to benefit from the earlier uptime and even with 21 pop straight archers here, to have this kind of food with gold economy is very good. Beautiful defensive castle for Air 12 on the hill as well to limit the push potential of Latvisho, who had the army lead here at some point. And then, unfortunately, got the Eagles fought back and had to think about a switch and a different plan. But in the end, uh, didn't uh, work out for Lot Bisho. Well played, though. Thanks for participating to Lot Bisho here. So that's it for that one. Let's. Uh...